Right, the final stage of our process, now that we've set up the uh, linear workflow in both 3D Studio Max and V-Ray, is to render out and save our image. So we've done our colour mapping settings, and uh, to render it, we need to enable the built-in uh, frame buffer that is uh, created by uh, V-Ray. You'll notice that if I then click Render and bring the render over here, uh, it opens the V-Ray frame buffer. We've got a render that's quite dark, and um, what most amateur 3D artists would do, and we've all been there, uh, me included, um, is that we'll then up the intensity of our lights to try and bring that um, uh, just to make it brighter. But what is actually going on is that this is not uh, had the gamma correction applied to it. So what we need to do is we need to click this sRGB button and that's just essentially a lookup table. It doesn't affect any of the maths under the hood. It's purely for display purposes. And you can see that that brings the, the global illumination out. It brings the illumination out and that's, that's really cool. So make sure the sRGB uh, button uh, is, is uh, selected. What we can then do is go to save our image and what we want to do just make that a little bit smaller, is we want to save out as an EX, uh, EXR image. So if we go to Open EXR, this is High Dynamic Range image, we can save this out as a 16 or 32 bit image. Let's uh, overwrite that. We get these different options, full float, half float integer. We generally use 16 bits. It's generally enough uh, color information uh, there, and it's, it's really a trade-off between the file size and really what you're going to use it for. But it's better than a JPEG, it's better than an 8-bit image. Uh, it's got much more uh, information stored in there. So just select 16 bits, hit OK, and you've saved your EXR. You can then use that in Photoshop or After Effects, and uh, you can mess about with the exposure um, in post. And it basically has got much more information to work with. So I'd really advise doing that.